Before we begin, are you planning on taking the PL300 certification exam? Then check out Cert XP, a fun new way to prepare for that PL300 where you will get exposure to practice exam questions. Visit crag.work slash angelica40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription and get access to all of Cert XP features. Now, on to the video. Hey everyone, my name is Angelica Chuquan, trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and today I want to talk to you about one of our newest offerings, Cert XP. Cert XP is a platform that is designed to help you prepare for exams while making that preparation a bit more fun. So Cert XP incorporates those gaming elements into your exam prep to help motivate you as a learner and to make reviewing those practice questions a little less intimidating, hopefully, and hopefully a bit more engaging and fun. So today what I'd like to do is I want to show you Cert XP and kind of walk you through the experience and take you and give you an insider's look into one of our levels here. So let's go ahead and let's get started on our journey. So with Cert XP, you have a few options, a few journeys to choose from, if you will. And you can scroll through and see we have a couple of different exam offerings on here right now at the time of this recording, but we're constantly trying to update and add this and add new exam offerings to review all the time. So if you're interested, if you're already on here, definitely come back and check for more because we're updating this all the time. So we have PL 900, PL 200, PL 300. We're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. AZ 900, DP 900, CompTIA. Azure AI Fundamentals, that AI 900, and DP 600, the uh, Microsoft Fabric exam. But let's go ahead and let's dive right into the PL 300 and begin our journey. So you can see we've got a little bit of an intergalactic kind of theme going here. And so well, let's begin on our journey here and get jump aboard our, our rocket ship. So I'm going to take us back into level one here today and go through level one, which is gonna focus in on the first major objective in functional group one, which is prepare the data. This group is going to make up anywhere from 25 to 30% of your overall exam questions. So it's kind of a biggie and you wanna make sure that you feel solid on these uh, skills and on the concepts behind these skills so that you tackle these and you nail this portion of the exam. So let's take a look at this first level here. We're going to go into level one, one, get data from data sources. Jumping into this level, the first thing that you'll see, of course, here, the, the exam we're reviewing, we're on level one, and we've got question one here. And so we've got Lydia here who can read the question to you if you would like. Um, and so you can set that up. But let's take a look at this first question. So it says, what happens when you set the storage mode of a table to import in Power BI? So you can see we have a couple of answers to choose from here. Well, the first one says the table becomes a direct query table. The next one says the table is automatically set to dual mode. The third says the table's data is cached and queries are fulfilled from cache data. And the last one, the table can be changed to either direct query or dual mode later on. So. I know looking at this here, this first answer has to be the table's data is cached and queries are fulfilled from the cached data. So as we submit that answer, we see that is in fact correct and we get an explanation in here. So importing your data into Power BI, you're going to import the model and load it directly into Power BI. Um, so in order to get update in data, or if any new data is added to the data source, we must refresh that data and pull that in. It's not a live connection um, like a direct query connection would be if we had set it to a direct query. Now, setting your storage mode to import is irreversible. You cannot switch it back. So that uh, also eliminated one of those other answer choices there. All right, let's go on and, and tackle a few more of these here. Next question. Since you're working on a Power BI desktop project, requiring you to connect to a Couchbase database. However, after searching the list of available data sources in the Get Data dialog box, you do not find an option for the Couchbase database. Which type of connector should you choose to establish a connection with the Couchbase database? Well, let's take a look at this one here and uh, look at our answer choices. So we have 
SQL Server Database, OLEDB, we have MySQL Database, and ODBC. Well, I know that this answer is going to be ODBC. I'm going to go ahead and select this here and we'll talk through this. So when you are trying to connect to your data source in Power BI and you do not see a native connector, a pre-built-in connector specific to your source, the data source, you will want to go in and select the open database connectivity. This is the one to use in this context and this scenario. So in order to establish that connection, this is the one you may want to use. The next question here says, what is a thin report in Power BI? So this is a bit of a review question here to get you thinking. So as we look at this here and we look at our answer choices, we see a report without a data set of its own connecting to a live existing database, a report that loads from an external source, a report with limited visualizations, and a report with basic formatting options. Hmm. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm not sure on this one. Maybe it's a little bit tricky. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this answer here, which I know is actually going to be wrong because the correct answer, a thin report, is one that is connected to an existing data set. Um, so what's going to happen when you get an answer wrong, when you or when you answer a question incorrectly? You will get exposed to this question at the end of this round, um, which is nice because it's a redemption question. So you get it wrong, don't worry, not the worst. Um, you can come back to this question and review it and get exposure to it again. So we'll take a look and we'll see this again uh, in those redemption questions. So get to experience that as well. Next question here says, can data sources categorize as organizational fold into public data sources in Power BI? So I know here that this is starting to refer to those, uh, the privacy levels. And so if we look at these answer choices, it says it depends on the specific permissions. Yes. No, they can fold into private data sources. And the next one here says only if explicitly configured to do so. Hmm. So let's go ahead. Maybe it's no, they can fold into private data sources. Let's. And so data sources that are set as organizational, these can fold into private data sources. Um, they can fold into public data sources. The visibility when you are working with your privacy levels is what's going to be affected. Is this something that's visible to everyone? Is it an organizational group? Then it's only set to, you know, a specific group, a trusted group. Um, typically, groups in your organization that you've predefined um, back in your active directory. And then um, private is, is going to be even more restricted, a uh, very limited visibility here. Next question here, also on privacy levels. In Power BI, privacy levels specify isolation levels that determine the degree to which one data source is isolated from other data sources. There are three data source privacy levels, private, organizational, and public. Which of the following is an example of a data source that should be categorized as organizational in Power BI? So let's take a look at our answer choices. We have a local text file containing sensitive financial data. Well, there's a couple of keywords in there. Uh, one, the big one here being sensitive. The next one says an Excel spreadsheet shared with a specific team within a company. Hmm, that one sounds pretty good. The next one here, a Wikipedia page with publicly accessible information. We already know that's going to be public. That can't be right. The next one here, a Microsoft Word document on a public website. So these last two cannot be the correct answer here. So we're looking now between these top two. This is the way I would approach an exam question as well. Try to eliminate answer choices if I'm not 100% certain of that correct answer choice. So as you look at this, I'm going to go ahead and say this must be an Excel spreadsheet shared with a specific team within the company. Um, and I'm going to click submit. There we go. So Power BI's organizational privacy level is for data sources intended to be shared and access, but by a specific group, by a specific team. And so this is a direct example, I believe, from Microsoft's um, privacy levels table on the Microsoft Learn documentation. Which of the following statements about shared data sets in Power BI is true? So shared data sets, also known as shared semantic models. Let's take a look at our answer choices here, the options we have to select from. Shared data sets can be selected when getting data through the Power BI desktop. Hmm. 
can we connect to shared data sets, shared semantic models from the Power BI desktop? Hmm, I wonder. Shared data sets cannot be used for creating other reports. Shared data sets do not support data updates or changes. Shared data sets are limited to a single workspace. So looking at this, the name of itself, um, you know, if you're not as familiar, that should be a, a large hit to you that shared data sets are used for creating additional reports. We also know that shared data sets, these can be selected when getting data through the Power BI desktop. So this is the correct answer, I believe. This one is not, it says cannot be used. Shared data sets do not support data updates or changes. Well, what would be the purpose then? And then shared data sets are limited to a single workspace. Also, if we can connect to them, we can publish them to another workspace. Let's click submit. Another one correct here, crushing it, let's go on. So what does the storage mode property direct query imply in Power BI? Well, let's take a look at our answer options for this one. It can be changed to import or dual later if needed. Hmm. Okay, maybe. Queries for tables with this setting can only be fulfilled from cache data. Well, that sounds a lot like a previous storage mode that we discussed. So I don't believe that's the correct answer. Next one, data from tables with this setting, always cached. Again, sounds like a different storage mode we previously discussed, like import. Um, the last one, it always queries, it allows queries, excuse me, to be executed directly on the data source. So as we take a look at this here, so it allows queries to be executed directly on the data source. This one here says it can be changed to import or dual later if needed. Hmm. So this is interesting here. Let's go ahead and take a look at selecting this final one. There we go. So understanding direct query allows queries to be executed directly on the data source. Um, getting, giving you that real-time access to the data is what you're looking for. So how can a developer create a dynamic report in Power BI that allows users to filter data by specific criteria? So looking at this question here, it's asking you something regarding a concept, regarding a feature in Power BI that you should be familiar with as a data analyst. And so as we look at this here, there's a few elements, a few features referenced in these answers. Let's take a look. So the first answer says by hard coding, hard coding the filter criteria directly into the report visuals. Hmm. By using bookmarks to save various report views for different criteria. Interesting. By incorporating parameters and enabling users to adjust the filter criteria. The final one by restricting data access and limiting user interactions. So to be able to create a dynamic report that allows users to filter data by specific criteria, being able to update those fields, this is going to involve the use of incorporating parameters. Bookmarks just create a snapshot view of the report with certain slicers and fields and selections that you've predetermined and set up for those bookmarks. And so that's what we're looking at. Hard coding wouldn't give us that dynamic capability that this question is referring to. And this one down here is referring to restricting users' interactions, so that can't be correct. Let's be incorporating the use of parameters. So parameters allow you to um, essentially create your report dynamically setting up the reports so that you can reuse values. Um, you can use this in the data source. You can use this inside of the report. And um, we'll talk a bit more about this here as we move into some other questions reviewing parameters. In Power BI privacy levels, specify isolation levels that determine the degree to which one data source is isolated from other data sources. There are three data source privacy levels, private, organizational, and public, which characterizes data sources set to private in terms of visibility and data folding in Power BI. So one thing about this question you may have noticed is it sounds almost identical to a previous question we were exposed to. Your PL300 exam will expose you to questions like this. You will see questions that are very similarly worded. The scenario may even be identical, but the possible solution may vary question to question. And so that's what you wanna pay attention to. Or like this question, there may be one keyword that is slightly different from the question that you've seen previously. So this is where you really wanna make sure um, on that exam that you're reading the question 
find out exactly what it's asking you and making sure you're paying attention to those keywords here because this question getting this correct or incorrect is the difference of potentially the difference of just misreading a single word so we're looking here at what characterizes data sources set to private so with this we are looking at these answer options and the first one i see here says restricted visibility can't fold into other data sources the next one says visible to everyone can fold into other data sources we know right away that one's incorrect so we're not going to even look at the second option again the next two here say visible to authorized users can fold into other private data sources i know that is not true then the last one says visible to trusted groups can't fold into any other sources so with private data sources i know that the visibility is extremely restrictive and that it cannot fold into other data sources that should be the correct answer that you're looking for here. Um, and so reading through those answer choices and really paying attention to the wording and seeing which one is the most correct, which is very similar to what you're gonna see on that PL300 exam. All right, now going back here to uh, question 10, this is the final one before we get into redemption. It says, how do parameters impact the flexibility of dynamic reports of Power BI? So let's take a look at our answer choices. Parameters make reports static and unchangeable. Well, I know that is incorrect because that is not the nature of parameters and what they're designed to do. Parameters allow users to customize the report layout. Um, the report layout is not what it is allowing those users to uh, dynamically to change there. So I know that's not correct. Um, but be very careful with the wording there because that might have been something that if you were reading too quickly, uh, you answered incorrectly here. Find our third question answer choice here says parameters enable users to filter data dynamically based on their specifications. Hmm, maybe. Let's look at the final one. Parameters automate report generation without user intervention. Um, not quite. So parameters are not automating the report generation without user intervention. There is some user intervention, right? You are able to go in. That's the purpose and update um, that data source. If you create a parameter of the data source connection, if you've got, you know, a couple of different environments set up. You have a test production and you want to have, be able to switch between those in your report. Um, you can do that by setting up those data source parameters and setting up uh, the connection very quickly and easily um, to flip between those two environments. So let's submit this answer. Awesome. Let's go on to our next question here, which should be our redemption question. So when you do get to those redemption questions, it is indicated there. So you know, okay, this is one I've seen jog my memory, what did I interpret incorrectly earlier? So really pay attention to these questions here. What is a thin report in Power BI? It's a report without a data set of its own. I remember this connecting to a live existing data set. Okay, so we got it right that time. Now you submit your, your final question here, and it's gonna give you a, a final score for this level. It gives you your session link, and it lets you know, you can go back and kind of review these here as well. So you can get a quick uh, session recap here, which is nice as well. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video, uh, demoing and looking inside at what Cert XP exactly can do for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this session today. And if you are getting ready for the PL300, definitely sign up for a subscription to our on-demand learning platform. You can use my code in the description below to save 40% on that subscription, which is gonna give you access to over 100 courses in our on-demand learning platform that can help you further your understanding if you need additional materials, additional video explanation, but it's also gonna give you access to Cert XP, which is gonna help you get ready to pass that PL300 exam. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.